Hi, I'm Mike Torsha, and welcome to Live Well and Thrive. I have a very special guest today, Jacqueline Dadani. Dadanian. Oh, Dadanian, sorry. It's all good. It's oh, all good. Sorry about that. It's all good. That's right, New York accent. <laughs> <laughs> she is the queen of diamonds. Ah, oh, thank and you. And I got to say, you have just a big heart and soul. When you walk in a room, you light up that room. You're so sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. I really was impressed when you were sharing with me the first time we met the work that you do. You create these magnificent pieces of custom art, jewelry, because I think it's like art, not just jewelry. And you make people look even more beautiful. But I love the fact that it was all types of things. I know you're currently working on something that is, I think, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor, we're doing um, with David August. We're partnering and making him a diamond suit that's going to be coming out for his new premiere. And um, it's going to be pretty amazing. So look out for that. <laughs> wow. So what is something that, can you, are you allowed to say how much it cost? A lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure he's going to look fantastic. He always right? looks fantastic, right? He is a stylish and, guy. And I mean, coming back to that, having that strong body, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, how did you get into this? You know, third generation jeweler. Um, was designing since I was nine, made my first piece at 12. And um, ever since then, you know, I went to GIA to study diamonds. But then after that, I was I was still designing for s certain jewelers in Europe. And I would make like $1,000 or $500. And I was excited, but the actual jewelers are making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 per piece. And I was like, I'm on the wrong end. <laughs> I got to do it. I got to do the whole process. I can't just stop at designing. So I started, you know, doing my own stuff after that and been doing it forever. It's like I'm born into it. That's fantastic. Well, your, you. your family members had that same passion and desire right. to make those beautiful pieces. So right. I can, Very I can artistic family. But you know what's about you? You you or yourself are like a piece of art. Oh, you, you really. Like, you, that's you, very you, sweet. I got to say, you're always, always so well dressed. I never see you with the same outfit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Every piece of jewelry, of course, is is, is so custom, so it's so unique. You. But the way you carry yourself, your hair is so perfect. I mean, your physique is amazing. You have a body of a 20-year-old woman. Thank you. And so that's what I want to also segue into right. is you're a single mom. Yes. You have three children, correct? I have four. Or four children. And what are their ages? My son just turned 30 about a week ago. What did you have when you were like 12? Close. <laughs> <laughs> I got my first marriage. I was married at 21 or just turning 22. Yeah. So, and then I have a 30 year old, a 25 year old, and a 15 and 13. And the two, three girls, one boy, the two little ones live with me full time. And, uh, yeah, I just, I had octomom disease. I kept wanting more and more <laughs> children. It's that life game you play, you know? And sure. you keep going and you fill up that car. I kept filling it up on top, underneath, everywhere. <laughs> so now, how do you do it? I mean, you have four kids. And you stay in fantastic shape. Thank you. And when I've seen women that were in such great shape and they blamed it because, well, I have so many kids. You know what it's like to have kids and be a single mom? They use it as an excuse. Of course you don't. So how do you make it fit in your day? Like, what is a typical day for you? You know, it's it's difficult. It's not easy. With one child, with four kids for, you know, five, six, seven, it doesn't matter. I mean, you have to have that mindset to, to be strong, to have a strong body, strong mind, you know, and strong heart. It all plays in together. My morning routine is usually, you know, wake up, have my cup of coffee before the kids are up, get the two little ones ready for school, drop them off, and either I'll go to Pilates that day. I work out about three or four times a week. So I'll either Pilates, come back, get ready, and then go to work. And then I work until it's about 2.30, and then I go back home to pick them up from school. And then sometimes I go back to work. You know, like last night I was working until 10.30 at night, um, made them dinner, went back and I met my diamond dealer and we sat and we worked for a couple of hours and then I went back home. I mean, you you just got to do what you have to do. Wow. It's and hard. now, what about your children? Do they, are they active? Are they eating healthy too? You know what? Yeah, because I, we do cook at home all the time and we make it fun. And it's exciting. I mean, they're, 
they're in- involved in it too. So of course we'll go to in and out and have like hamburgers here and there. I mean, they're kids, right? But most of the time we're making dinner together and uh, they enjoy that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Now, did your mother or father teach you how to cook or did you learn by You know yourself? what? Funny enough, my, my father cooked a lot. My mother cooked a lot. My first husband taught me how to cook. I grew up with like, you know, my mom cooking, my dad cooking. It was a big family affair. We're Armenian, you know? Yeah. Like we cook for every meal and then there's a spread on the table from one end <laughs> to another. So so we're always eating. But you gotta know what you're eating, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and putting the right well, things. Well, it reminds in the mouth. me of when I was a kid being an Italian. Um, my grandmother would cook a feast and all my right. aunts would and my mom would be putting all the food that they prepared for two days, you know, especially right. if it's a holiday, you oh, know. Right. And yeah. they purposely had such massive portions because they said, you're going to take it home. Right, of course. Your food uh, for the week, you know, because <laughs> <that's laughs> right? none of it would get wasted, you know. Right, yeah. And I remember my, my grandmother, like, I was a fat kid. And, and, Were you? Oh, I was so fat. I was so plump. My face was like, Round like Stop. a pumpkin, right? Was it five pounds more or was oh, it? Oh, no, 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 no. I was actually 50 pounds overweight. Oh, wow. And when I went to school, they the school nurse to my mom, you know, your son at 14 is 51 pounds over what he should wow. be. And he's not good health. And she said to my mom, look, if he doesn't get help, wow. he could die or have a stroke right. by the time he's 40. Now, my muff, my mother was a very tough Italian woman. My mother said, I know what to do. She took my hand, and this is the first time I ever felt my mother's hands clammy and trembling. And then that scared me, because I just thought the oh, nurse was gonna... crazy, yeah. right? So then my mother goes, this is what we're going to do. Drove home. Come with me. We go into the living room. She turns on the TV. She goes, we're going to watch this guy, Jack LaLanne. Oh. We're going to lose weight. But you know what? I'm going to do with you because look at me. I'm chubby too. Because she wanted me to feel like I'm not alone. Right. So sure enough, I'd go there yeah. in the living room every afternoon with my mom after school, do the jumping jacks and all the stuff. Wow. And she started watching, balancing the foods and making not too much. And I started losing weight. And, and then my body started evolving, you know? And then later on, I met Jack Laney, became my mentor. And now here I am, this fitness guy, following in his footsteps. Now, I was this chubby kid that this one nurse said, hey, you know, he better lose some weight. Otherwise, I probably would have been this fat guy running my father's landscape business. we probably about five kids, right? Right. Would have been wow. okay, wow. but I wouldn't have been healthy. So my mother the driving force and you are the driving force of your family you really are but i want you to come on because you will inspire other women even men too you can't make it happen it doesn't mean that because you have kids and you have all these all those are all excuses i mean we're all tired you know there's nice that i have four hours of sleep and then i still get up and i'll either go to Pilates or do hot yoga or, or go for a walk or something. You know, you, you have to move your body every day, just a little bit. You know, you feel better. Don't you feel better when you exercise? Oh, totally. Right? If I don't, I seriously get a little depressed. I feel like I need it. And, and it's important. And the kids see me and they go on walks with me. And I'm like, come on, let's go to hot yoga together. <laughs> they laugh at me, but I'm like, I want them to be able to, to know that a healthy lifestyle is important. And it's, it's, it's going to guide them to doing the right things in life, right? Now, what about your diet? What kind of diet do you follow? You know, mostly a Mediterranean diet. I, and I, for so long, you know, years ago, I had high cholesterol and all the doctors were like, you got to stop the red meat. You can't eat this, you can't eat that. Then I went into an all protein, no, all plant-based diet. And I had this huge iron deficiency issue. And and they wanted to give me, you know, a blood transfusion and all this stuff when I was in Scottsdale. And so I ended up changing my own diet and and doing what and stopped listening to the doctors. And I did what I felt was right for my body. My cholesterol went down. I I don't eat high carbs. I eat, I eat a lot of red meat. I eat lamb. I eat uh, chicken, I eat beef, I eat steak all the time. And my friends all look at me and they're like, how do you eat all this food? And it's like, it's all real food. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not processed foods. And that's important because the minute you start putting that type of stuff in your body, that's when issues will arise, right? You know, it's so true because I remember one of the things Jacqueline said to me, if it comes in a can or a box, don't eat it. Right. It's got to come from the ground. The closer to the ground, the better, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm on the same page as you. I eat steak probably five times a week. Same. I love it. Same. But then I rotate my proteins. It could be a type of fish, it could be some kind of chicken or turkey, some filet mignon, New York strip, porterhouse. But I love red meat. The Me taste too. of it is just beautiful. And the iron is good yeah. for the blood, right? Yeah. But you naturally are doing exactly what you should be doing. Right. You're Because you're listening to your body. Right. And they people, people listen to your body, people, right? Like I have, I have a friend that walks in and she has that big, um, that big gulp and she's drinking all this Coke and I, I don't, my kids don't drink soda. I think it's like the devil for your body. It's the worst thing. Like have some fresh juice. Ha makes, we'll make apple juice. We'll make fresh apple juice and I'll throw some carrots in there and they have no idea that they're having <laughs> carrot juice with their apple. I mean, like it's all important stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's common <laughs> sense too, Mike, right? Like don't drink that, you know, soda. Have some juice, have some water, you know. And you make it an experience, right? Didn't you take the kids shopping? Always. Right? We always go together. And, and then it's beautiful. Then you bring all these beautiful groceries home, and then you together, you make, make your it, meal. Right. And then isn't it great when you take that first bite, knowing that you made it with yeah. your children? Yeah. See, I, I wish more people would yeah. cook with their kids. That's what my mom did with me and my dad and my grandma. Right. My parents did that with me, too. It's a beautiful experience, because right. then... You're part of the no, process. You're, yeah, you're doing the whole thing. You're yelling at each other. No, this has too much salt. This has, but you're communicating. You're back into this, you know, <laughs> you know, small little pocket of having each other right by in your side, and you know, making a meal together. And that's important. It's, it's so much fun. You know what's yeah. so funny is, like, if you see me, I usually go to like Whole Foods or you know, right. Sprouts, whatever. Right. And I saw this big mound of cantaloupes. And they go, mm, wow. Look good because I like to have a breakfast. Yeah. Know? So I remember going over the cantaloupe and feeling it, and then pressing the top. And and I remember as a little boy, my grandma would say, "You press on the top, and if it goes down nice and slow, and and it's moist, it's ready. And it's you ready. Smell you, it. You smell it. You know it's ripe. Right. If it's not. Yes. Not ready. Uh, not ripe. Uh. So I was in, just the other week. I was in the Whole Foods in uh, Brentwood. Yeah. And there, and there was just pressing on the melon. And I was like, oh, I'm so excited. I grabbed the bag, my eyes lit up. This woman goes, excuse me, how do you tell if the melon's ripe? I go, let me show you. And I went into the whole thing about my grandmother, how she was like having so much fun. She goes, well, what about the tomatoes? Well, now I am with this complete stranger. And I'm helping her pick the tomatoes and, and the, the scallions and all the other stuff. And she goes, you know, I want to get a nice piece of steak. Oh, you're talking to the right go. guy. Right? <laughs> so, it should be grocery shopping with Mike right now. <laughs> No, but you know, see what I'm saying? I I yeah. love it. Like you You're love involved. it. Yes. And, and your kids yeah. are gonna do like I yes. did because of my parents because yes. they instilled it in me. Yes. And that's why I, I tell people pay it forward because if your kids are used to going to McDonald's and all this other shit all the time, I'm not talking about occasionally, right? right? right. It's right. when you have it too frequent, right? right. You have all that processed food. It's, it's the processed food that's the killer, you know, and it hurts your body. It's not, and people that do all this, you know, oh, I'm a vegan, and and I look at them, and they're swollen, and they're they're like heavy, and they don't look good. It's all yep. processed foods, and it's all high estrogen based foods, and it's like, what are you what are you doing to yourself? I, I know, and here's something that's wild. Remember the Impossible Burger yes. that came out? Yes. Okay. Well, when it first came out, I saw what they were using to color it, to make it look like right. blood right. and beef and whatever. Right. Well, they're finding that the coloring mm -hmm. is toxic to the body. Really? And it's not, as, it's not better for you than steak. It's just, if you're doing it because of saving animals, that's different. Right. If you're doing it because of health, eat the real thing. Right. The stock was worth like billions. Yes. yes. And now it's down to significantly, I don't know, like 100 million, 200 million, whatever it is. But it went down 60% because oh, people wow. started realizing that it's, it's not you. as healthy as 
they said. Right. But they, the thing about what I didn't like is when they first were showing how how we made this amazing, you know, meatless burger. It's in a laboratory where they we use this color to make it. I was like, Do you oh. remember grabbing it and then lo- I was looking at it and they even had like little food coloring to make it look like there was blood in the like in the patties. Yeah. It was disgusting. I wish someone put that in the body. I don't, body. Know. I don't I get don't know. And, and besides, I, I wouldn't even eat, eat try to eat it. But right. It didn't look exciting to me to eat anything. It's not like a beautiful steak. You know, agreed. My daughter, the 25-year-old, she was vegan, ate, ate the beyond whatever here and there. And so um, she gained 25 pounds during that process of becoming first vegetarian, then vegan and whatever. And then her doctor, her nutritionist was like, listen, you really need to stop all this stuff. This is all processed, fake food. You really need to go to clean, healthy eating start with fish. So she started eating fish and now she's eating chicken and beef and she's lost her 25 pounds. Fantastic. All by just changing your diet. That's all it is. Just Uh, eat clean, you know? Yeah. You know, it's like, I always tell people there's no secret. There's no secret. There isn't. Move your body and eat clean. How hard is that? Move more than you eat, you know. I mean, <laughs> come on, you know the calories we consume and yeah. just math. And you know, I, I I also tell people about this fasting. Okay, so people don't realize well, what that. What do you think of okay, that? Let me explain what fasting is. I'm interested and it, in this. It's it's like a mathematical problem. Okay. So if you were to reduce your calories, 500 calories a day for seven days, that's 3,500 calories. That's one pound. Now, if you were to increase your activity and burn, say, 500 calories more, that's 1,000 calories. So now you're losing two pounds just by adjusting your expenditure and your consumption. Right, right. So what happens when people fast is, well, if I fast for two days, and I usually take, say, 2,000 calories a day, so right. I say, then that's 4,000 calories minus... The amount of calories you would have had in that from that fourteen thousand. Right. So now you're losing a certain amount of weight because thirty five hundred calories mm-hmm. is a pound. So you'd get a little mm-hmm. over less than a pound. Mm-hmm. So the only way the body understands because the way the system works is how many calories I've had that week. So I can either go. Let me say. Let me exercise more. Let me maybe reduce my calories a little bit. And I don't have to starve myself. I can have a beautiful breakfast. I have a nice lunch. I have a wonderful dinner. I don't have to sit around drinking water. You're happy. I'm happy. (laughs) Because you're not starving yourself. But people (laughs) don't understand. It's no secret. It's fasting is caloric restriction. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, hey, if I want to go to the valley, I could take Laurel Canyon. I could take Coldwater. I could Beverly Glen. But which way do I prefer? I mean, I like the four or five. Yeah, so jump in my car, yeah, nail it, straight. get there faster, yeah. <laughs> right? But me, I'm a Mediterranean yeah, diet. Right. You know, I I just like high protein. I love green vegetables. Yeah, I have my rice and I have my baked potato. But when I feel I need it, because right. I listen to my body, right. I don't eat it because it's there, and I eat it because everybody else is eating that. If I want pasta, I have pasta. <laughs> Agreed. Right, and Agreed. there's days when I don't eat the same amount. Right. I listen to my body. Right. So if I don't feel like having six eggs in the morning, I have three or four. Right. If I want one piece of toast or a smaller bowl of meal, I listen and mm-hmm. I tell people and I work with, I, I do a mental program for the Boys and Girls Club mm-hmm. of America. And when I share with the kids, listen to your body. Right. You know, when Thomas Edison and, and Thomas Jennison, Jefferson um, would go to sleep, they would do this. Whenever they felt tired. Right. So like Thomas Edison would bring a pillow and a blanket everywhere he went. Mm-hmm. And even if he was at someone else's house, he'd lay down because he felt that if you are sleepy, you should listen to your body. And and Thomas Jefferson did the same thing. These people, I mean, look how many centuries ago. Right. But they would sleep when they felt the body need the body knows when you need to sleep. Right. And if you think about it, if you only slept when your body feels it needs sleep. And you only eat when you feel to eat, which healthier you would all right. be in America. Right. But we're all programmed. Get up a certain time, go to bed a certain time. Mm-hmm. Go by how the body feels. 
You know what's so sad? You're 100% right. And I think now, when we were growing up, we were outside. We were always outside. We were always moving. We were on our bicycles. We were walking. We were doing crazy ass things. Like now, these kids are on an iPad all day. So they're not moving their body the way that we did when we were growing up. Oh, no, you're right. I mean, my. So, how do you do that when you go to the Boys and Girls Club? What do you say? Like okay, a... so what we do is we do a day of health fitness okay. and beauty. I invite people that do yoga, Pilates, CrossFit, um, meditation. Then we have people that talk about healthy cooking to give the kids oh, ins- inspiration that. how to prepare the foods. Then I invite people that are, I invite models, mm-hmm. an actress, a pilot, a fireman, and a policeman. And we go into groups, and then each group has to go and listen to each person. They talk about how they started in this career, what they wanted to do when they were a child, like that. their age. And then they all will see the different type of diverse opportunities mm-hmm. there are, because so, it's teen and tweens. That's mm-hmm. the age, which is the perfect time, it's right? What, where you mold them, right? Right. So then I remember this little girl said to me, she goes, you know, um, my mommy is a um, vegetarian. And my daddy is a meditarian, he calls himself. <laughs> and I don't know That's what cute. to do. Because my daddy comes home and he wants me to eat steak. And my mommy yells and doesn't want me to eat steak. And I don't know what to do. Oh, poor child. And I said, <laughs> Julie, what do you want to do? I like the steak, like my daddy. Because oh. when I eat it, I feel good. I go, well, that's your body telling you. You need that You need protein. that high, you need that protein. Right. So you know what? Stand up for yourself. And if you want something, then tell them. But don't make them force you to do anything. You should never let a parent do that. Take charge of your life. I agree a thousand percent. And you know what? The following three months later, the parents came in. And they thanked me. They said, wow, whatever you said to our daughter, she's telling us how she wants things, how she'd never like that. And we're trying to make her play soccer and she doesn't like soccer, that she actually wanted to focus on music. You broke our daughter out of this shell. We were like- You gave her a voice. Right, right. So that's why I tell kids when I do this, I do it out of my heart. I mean, Mm -hmm. I don't get paid for that stuff. Right. And because I was, like I said, an overweight kid and I want to help other kids. Right. And that's why I started my company originally, Operation Fitness, was for kids. Right. And then I realized it can't be just for kids. It's the environment the children are exposed to. Right. So Operation Fitness became fitness for the entire family, mm. which then, of course, extended to our four-legged friends. I have a whole program for I love cats that. and dogs who has Fitness Unleashed. <laughs> so I really expand on it. But to get back to you, because this is about you today, I love what your energy and your attitude about Thanks. life, common sense, you know, it's, it's no secret formula. No, it's we just, all know what we need. Our bodies tell us. We just listen. There's just so much noise all around us all the time that we stop and then we don't listen to our bodies. We just do what we, it's this quick, oh, let me just grab a sandwich from, you know, Taco Bell or or, or Starbucks or something, grab something quick and eat. That's all terrible food for you. Yeah, You know, it's just eat real good food. Go to Whole Foods. They have that great bar right there, right? That's the best bar out there. Oh, it's fantastic. You know, sometimes when I'm in a rush and kind of late, I go in there to get food. Yeah. By the time I come home and prepare the food, it's going to be a while. And I I grab something to go. And I feel safe. Right. That it's not going to be something full of chemicals. Isn't that so sad that we're not safe even with our food? Like, it's so frightening because... My son, who just moved in with me, and his his girlfriend and my son, they just moved in because they're looking for a place. And he's a little overweight, you know? So, And so is his girlfriend. And um, we were walking through Whole Foods. And I was like, let's get this. Let's get that. And they were like grabbing the fruit. And I'm like, no, it's not organic. There's pesticides, which could harm your hormones, which could cause you to stay overweight, which doesn't help. You know, there's all these little things that people are missing that are important and small little change could change the way your body is and, and help you lose weight. You know, it's just all what you put in your body. You know, you talk as if you're like this professor because you're very knowledgeable. <laughs> I got kids. Organically, right? <laughs> and it's wonderful because people don't, you're right. The biggest thing is 
to get organic. Right. Because otherwise it's going to have those pesticides. Right, right. And people don't understand that especially fruits and vegetables. Yes. It soaks into the skin. It's important, yes. So I don't care yeah. how much, you know, I, I see these companies that have the spray, and don't do shit, it's already in the, in the, in the fruit, right. it's in the vegetable. Right. You can't wash it out. No. So that's why it's so important, organic. And then right. people, you know, what's so funny is, people just don't know what organic means. I asked this one woman, I was at the store, I said, you know what organic means? She goes, yeah, it's more expensive. <laughs> but really, she had no idea. Then I asked one, I was, sometimes I do these little surveys. Right. I go, do you know what natural means? No. Wow. Um, well, that means it's not processed. Right. Do you know what natural organic means? It's not processed and there's no pesticides. No chemicals. But if you go yeah. in some of the stores, it says natural, and then it says the organic, then it says natural organic. But how many people really know what that means? It's it's sad. Right? And it's so sad. And that's why I think people should be like you organically learning with their parents how to properly take care of themselves from the shopping to the exercising mm -hmm. to the preparing mm -hmm. the foods. And most of all, paying it forward. If we start passing on our knowledge and sharing with others, mm -hmm. that's how you grow. Are you an alcohol drinker? You know, I would once in a while drink a little wine. Yeah. My father would, when he made wine, I was eight years old, making wine. I was drinking wine since I was eight. And he would only say, you want to drink a little bit? Respect alcohol. Mm. So to this day, if I do have wine, mm -hmm. it has to be a good wine. Mm -hmm. I drink it for the enjoyment, not for the effect. Right. I like to have it with a steak or a pasta, right. like especially right. like red. But all these people talking about, hey, it's poisonous. You got to stop drinking. You know no, what? I, I just, I think certain alcohol and consuming too much of it could be poisonous to your body. But I think red wine, Jesus juice, as I, as I call it, <laughs> yeah. I think a little bit of that in moderation is is fine. Exactly. You, you know, know I, and I said at one interview I did with someone, I said, you know what? If really I'm going to drink in some wine once in a while, it's going to short my life for two, three years. <laughs> I don't give a shit because otherwise I'd be bored to death. I want to have some fun. So if once in a while I want to puff on a cigar, <laughs> on that piece of that cake. You're going to do I'm it. I'm going to do it because what good is life? Right. Without enjoying some things, right? Exactly. Like moderation. Yeah. Listen, I got to thank you. This was Thanks. so much fun. Thank you. And I've been wanting you to come on for such a long time. We finally did it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, and I want to meet your kids. Oh, I, the I, most, I really love to can meet I them. I tell you, Mike, I'm telling, I don't, if I've done anything right, it is raising these most amuse, ama amazing, beautiful children. They're kind spirited, good soul kids, and I love it. Well, see, what you've done is you've passed on all these wonderful traits to them. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to do like I did, for what my mom did for me. Yeah. It'll affect them and their children for your future generations, your family. Yeah, I love thank it. You. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed the show and please remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching this episode. Got great news. The merch is ready. You're going to see an array of all kinds of great products. Go to operationfitness.com. If you want to order anything, click on my store. Thanks for your support.